So you can only go as far as the white bottle. Once you pass the white bottle, you're going to see what's going on. Yeah, there is fine. Okay. I started recording, right? The serious question is what is the white bottle doing there? It's to help me with the presentation because I'm a bit nervous. I've tried to do this in Spanish, but it's not the same as doing it in English. So please excuse me for the thousand mistakes. I'm going to make. I'm going to try to do a little bit of an interactive presentation, so I'm going to ask for your help at a certain point, okay? So the one who do it better will receive as an award this wonderful <laughs> bottle of Pata Negra Gran Reserva 2009 Valle Peñas, which is the region that we are coming from. It is a very expensive bottle of wine, so uh, I think if you are uh, good at answering my questions, you will receive a nice award, okay? So, um, well, this is going to be the structure of my presentation. I'm going to talk about the digital technology used both for social and solitary learning. Or at least, I'm going to talk about what I think it is appropriate for solitary and social learning. And later you will tell me if you, are, if you agree with me or not, okay? So I'm going to talk about, of course, the advantages of digital technology, like the information and uh, access to information and sharing information. But also I would like to talk about disadvantages. For example, the concept of infoxication, which is... Uh, something that my students experience every day. And, of course, let, later I'm going to propose you some technologies and I will tell you my experiences or our, our experiences in my team regarding it. So, uh, I attended a webinar a few months ago where they presented some astonishing uh, statistics, which were that 67% of millennials agree that they can find a YouTube video on anything they want to learn. And I started thinking that that's what I do myself and I am not a millennial. A millennial is someone who has become of age in the 2000s. And I am not. <laughs> so, and I do that myself. So for big projects or small fixes, students tend to look for information in YouTube. For video mostly and that leads to some students not paying attention to my lessons and that bothers me a lot because I'm the kind of teacher that prepares a lot the lessons and if the students doesn't pay attention to me because later they have a video YouTube that they can uh, watch at home or whatever I become angry and when I become angry I become a bad teacher and I don't like that so uh, this one statistic saying that of, of smartphone users, 91% turn the, com the uh, smartphone, the devices, for everything. I want to go somewhere. Let's uh, say what Google have to say uh, about it. So it's, it's, it's a question of uh, we use smartphones for everything. And they demand the teachers immediacy which is one of the questions I want to talk about. Um, well, among most popular searches is, for example, how to tie a tie, how to curl your hair with a straightener, or how to make a cake. So they use YouTube for almost everything. So students want, want immediate, immediacy and relevance, not only immediate access to information, but also relevant. So it's, it's what Google calls the I want to moment. I want to do something. I want to learn something. I want to buy something. So most of our students avoid reading textbooks, written notes, or instructions manual. They want video and they want uh, immediacy. So that's 
uh, a very important thing to take into account. So the problem sometimes is where to find reliable sources of information. It's funny because when a student of mine go to internet, sometimes they believe that the information they find, they find in the first link is right. Most of the time, or it's not accurate, or it's e even can be fake. So that's a problem called infoxication, which is the phenomenon, I like, I'm going to read that definition because I liked it. The phenomenon that refers to the difficulty or impossibility of taking a decision of keeping informed about a particular subject due, the, due to the endless amount of information that you can find, okay? So that's uh, lead us to the roles of the teachers in the 21st century. Uh, well, teachers are not any more teachers. They are much more. They have to be controller, prompter, supplier, assessor, organizer, tutor, and every time I talk to my colleagues about it, they refuse they decline to be such things, but we have to admit that it is what students are demanding us. So I'm going to talk about technology grouped into four categories. The first of all is, of course, sharing and accessing information. Many of you have already talked about it, so I'm not going to uh, go deep into it, okay? Uh, the second one is the simulation. You talked also uh, about Minecraft and a lot of different systems of simulation. So I'm going to talk as, as well about it. But with uh, our experience background, I'm going to talk also about automatic self-assessment, which is a thing that I like a lot because it saves me a lot of work. I don't mark anymore. I, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, building scripts to correct my exams. I don't correct it anymore. And I remember the first time I became teacher, I found myself with a pile of sheets to be corrected. And I thought, oh jeez, it's unbearable. It's just unbearable. So uh, I'm going to talk also about our experience with it. And also virtual teaching. Virtual teaching is quite important. Not only because uh, the last, uh, training that I received is virtual, but also because our students demand it. So why not? So let me introduce you, if you don't know it, to Slido. Do you know Slido? Okay, so I would please ask you to enter the webpage slide.do and enter that code here, red zero. And later, I will take control of your mobile phones to ask you a question. Would you please do that for me? Sure. <laughs> Is it red zero or red O? Red zero. Red zero, red zero. yeah. So while, while you're entering the, the web page, if you are not in it yet, are you in it? Okay. So uh, I know already that you all use Moodle. Moodle is wonderful because it allows you to organize all the information and of course it prevents intoxication because you are the one, you are the source of information, you organize everything into your Moodle platform, so I guess you already know it. And of course, of course, my presentation is about solitary and social learning, so uh, I guess you all know that it's ideal for solitary learning. Solitary learners. Why? Why do you think it is ideal? Okay, it, it gives you a quiet environment to study and to work on your own. But do you think that it's also adequate for social learners? We'll see. I don't know. So, 
disadvantages. It requires infrastructure. You need a web server, you need certain maintenance. I've seen many, many Moodle servers hacked by their own students, so it requires certain work behind it. So you have to be able, as a teacher, you have to be able to focus on your teaching, on your lessons, not on the maintenance of the web page. So it's, it's, it's a disadvantage. And of course, putting all your information into Moodle means that you require a thorough planning. It's, uh, it's also needed. So you might know Moodle, but you might not know Excel learning. What is Excel learning? Since my English is very poor, I'm going to uh, play a video where they explain what Excel learning is, if, if I can. If it loads. <laughs> Well, maybe not, maybe not, but I will show you how do I use Excel Learning. Well, you have to know that Excel Learning is a tool to construct navigable web pages. But the important thing is you can track down the progress of the student. So you can see if a student has read it all or has gone through all activities <coughs> or just discarded some text, you can control it. So, here I have a Moodle with all the structure of the course and the student can navigate through it. And, and the system is all the time leading you to certain parts of the text or the written notes or the activities or whatever. So Excel Learning, it is a project now maintained by the Spanish uh, Ministry of Education but it started back in Australia and New Zealand. So it's quite used. Uh, the video is not loading, so I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to play it for you. But uh, you can imagine that uh, it's a very good tool because I use it. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. It allows you also to mm, export these navigable web pages into a format called SEO, Searable Content, ob content Object. And they are really good because teachers can exchange SEOs of their subjects. So, I don't know, maybe Muslim can use uh, my SEO for Python or I can use his for my classes. As long as it is there, it can be shared. So, it's very good also because the same naviga navigable web pages that you have built, it can be exported into an iPad 3 format, which is the one we are using for our project, for example. So, my, fir in my first interruption is, if you look at your smartphone, you will see this question, which is, model plus extra learning are adequate for solitary learners, both, or social learners? What do you think? So six responses, nine responses. Okay, 11 responses. 75% uh, of you think that it is adequate for both. Why is it also adequate for social learners? Because I think, in my opinion, that the technology is not adequate for one system or another. It depends on the way you program your activity and your lesson. It would be adequate for one system or another. So maybe after 15 responses, both 67%. Okay. I guess that's enough. It's, it was just a test to know your opinion. The second technology that you already talked about, so I'm not going to bother you with it longer, uh, it's Google Apps, uh, the so-called G Suite.
For example, in my high school, every teacher has a G Suite account and every student as well. So maybe you know, of course, Gmail, of course, Google Drive, of course, Google Calendar, but you might not know that there's a tool called Google Classroom, which is, uh, I guess, they try to compete with Moodle. And it's a very good way to organize your classes. So the second question would be, using Google Apps can help solitary learners, maybe social learners, maybe both. What do you think? I can see we, we all agree that both uh, styles of, of learning can be uh, treated with that. Okay. So, I really, really love simulation. Virtual machines. And of course you can say yeah, you like virtual machines because you teach some technology. But I've seen how people in my school use virtual machines for almost everything. For example, well, if you the first, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, I like this lady. This lady is a Google employee, and she will explain you in 60 seconds what a virtual machine is, just in case you don't know it. No. I don't know why the links are not working, so I'm going to look for it here in YouTube. Okay, so virtual machines are important for me, for example, because I teach Android programming. And to develop Android apps, you have to test the programs in many kind of different devices. So I can simulate having a smartwatch without spending a single uh, euro in it. So it's sometimes a question of resources, of not having resources to do something. For example, if it weren't for my virtual machines, the systems and networks administrators of my school couldn't teach such things because we don't have the money to spend uh, uh, on a whole network with several <coughs> computers for each student. So it's a question sometimes of, sometimes of saving resources or rather uh, not having the resources to do something. If you simulate them, 
it's in the computer. It's cost exactly zero, since for example, VirtualBox is uh, open source, okay? So another experience with simulation of the virtual courses, for example, um, uh, in an Erasmus plug, uh, in an Erasmus Plus project, Erasmus Plus project that I have uh, with a German school and a French school, we did a training session uh, regarding entrepreneurship. We wanted to foster entrepreneurship among our students. Mm -hmm. And we used a Cisco uh, software for gamification. Uh, it's called the Cisco Aspire game, but Cisco has many other simulation platforms. So uh, you can become a Cisco school, it's at least it doesn't cost too much. How much it costs us money? It's, it's not very expensive, right? It's around 400 euros a year, and you have a lot of different uh, simulating platforms. So if you want to do something, uh, maybe you have a virtual course simulating something. Our unexperienced, well, that leads us to the term of ga gamification. And that's the definition that I like here, which is gamification techniques are intended to leverage people's natural desires for socializing. So, of course, if I ask you this, what would you answer? Using simulation and gamification techniques can help Sixty percent in both. The rush is getting higher and higher. <coughs> okay, I will tell you our uh, my experience with this uh, entrepreneurship simulation platform that I told you about. It was the course was only finished by two students, and both were, in my opinion, the most solitary ones. They managed to finish the whole game. And there were two very uh, solitary students. So I don't know. Maybe it was that we didn't design very well the activity for teamwork. I don't know. But that was our experience. So yes, I guess I, I agree. I agree. It is adequate also for both uh, learning systems. We also tried gamification in another project, uh, building our own apps, but that's quite complicated because you have to spend a lot of time developing these apps. So we designed uh, an app that you can download it from Google Play Store, it's called Run For Your Lives. It was intended to teach our students vocabulary based on a good diet and a healthy life. And the question was, uh, the students have to uh, go through questions about vocabulary, some tests, and it was designed by level. So every time the student passed the level, they got a star that was like money that they could spend on playing games. So I told all my students of um, uh, multimedia uh, programming to program a single game. And these students that passed the level could play those games, could earn money to play those games. So it was a, a, a way of uh, making them re learn vocabulary later to play. So it was okay. It was for me. It was a bit disappointing, but uh, I guess we didn't advertise the app too much uh, to be popular. So. Nowadays, nobody uses this. Is, uh, also, so unfortunately, the slide do allows only three polls. So you have to switch event. Now, if you go back, you have to put red one, which is the following set of polls.
So the next category would be the, assel the self or automatic self -assess assessment software. And I would like you to, uh, uh, to know, to get to know, don't judge. Don't judge is a tool that corrects programs. So you can send, you can send don't judge any kind of script or program or assignment and it will compare results. It will test in different kinds of situation and it will mark automatically the assignment. So we used it for a very, very good experience, which was a, a contest, a programming contest called Programame. In Spanish, called, uh, it was called Program Me. So <laughs> um, it was quite fun because we used a virtual judge based on dumb judge and we also used a real jury uh, to correct the virtual judge. So all the students worked in teams to solve problems, problems that we pre-set, uh, of course. And it was uh, very funny because every time they solved a problem, we put a balloon in their table. So it was <coughs> kind of nice. I'm starting to be annoyed because the links are not working and I don't know why. So you can see there are students working in teams in our school and you can see the balloons with the teams that already solved some problems. So every team could see uh, if they were winning or not. So that encouraged them to keep on trying hard and it was a complete teamwork and it was really nice. And it was uh, a very good experience. Last category, the virtual teaching. Uh, we have augmented reality. I, I guess some of you have talked about it yet. Uh, Again, the link is not working. I'm sorry very much. It is running somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> Ah, there you go. So take a deep breath and let go. So don't watch that risky book. I I I rest my not anymore now it's called HP Review. So, if you put the image, um, if you put your phone over an image of the recipe, then the recipe comes alive and there's a lot of students telling you how to cook the recipe. It was so that was also a very good project. Oh, 
Okay, enough. Well, I'm supposed to have here two videos about what virtual scenography is. <coughs> so instead, since it is not working, I'm going to come here to show it what uh, virtual scenography is. This is my Moodle, and this is one of the courses I have, which is multimedia programming. So what I do is I upload them. summaries of the classes. As you, as you can see, there's a virtual stage. Here is my presentation, and I'm there talking. So students can review the lessons after they are at home. And this is easily done with the same tool we use, which is OBS. Right now, all of you have been recorded with the OBS software. It's called Open Broadcasting Software. Open because it's uh, open source, so you can use it freely. And it's very nice because uh, you just need to put, in, to put yourself in front of a camera and talk and control your presentation, as I am doing right now. And you will see everything done like that. There's two styles of videos, this one. And if I manage to open the link, Uh, I know what's happening. Windows Media Player cannot play the file. I don't know why. In my computer, I could. So I'm not going to show you that video. So you imagine what uh, virtual scenography is. And last, I'm going to tell you the experience of one of my colleagues from the university. He's developing a framework to program in HTML interactive videos. And that's quite interesting as well. Let's see if I can play the video. So the video is in French because it was uh, done for a French company. It's about how to keep healthy your teeth. So Bonjour et bienvenue au défi 04. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous poser trois questions sur l'hygiène dentaire et vous le verrez, les réponses sont parfois surprenantes. Vous êtes prêts Allez, c'est parti. Première question. Pour des dents saines, sans carré, il est recommandé de boire un grand verre de jus d'orange, faire une série de 30 tableaux tous les matins, changer de brosse à dents. So he's asking in order to keep your teeth healthy, uh, which is, would you do? So let's see if I choose this one. Say no. You are not right. You are wrong. So it's very quick. It, it will force you to pay attention to it. No, That's, that wasn't the right answer. So it will appear that it's on the video, but behind it is a full layer of HTML with all the uh, structure in XML with the answers. And so it's quite entertaining. So just to finish, if I ask you, virtual scenography and augmented reality are adequate to only two questions, two answers, four answers. 
questions. You don't see the questions. Did you did you enter red one in the code? Ten answers, seventy percent. Six is what was the other page? Okay, so here's your opinion. Do you think 75% uh, think it's adequate for both? So again, I don't know if I have manipulated you, but again, you agree with me that it's a question of how you organize your lessons more than the technology that you use. And the last one would be inter interactive videos are adequate to Okay, so again, the majority voted for both. I also agree. So in the last game I have prepared for today is for the competition. So I guess you already know Kahoot. Okay. So let's play it. So you have to go to kahoot.it and enter that code. Kahoot.it Two players already. more players than the <laughs> than the answers to the questions <laughs> waiting for players another one can we start okay so let's start
to the boss who's the boss Muslim Agreed. Uh, I, 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 I said this uh, slide beforehand because I wanted to manipulate you to think it to my own opinion. And well, yeah, I would say that would be the summary of all the presentation. All the technologies presented are adequate to both styles of learning. It depends on how you implement it. So, muchas gracias. Uh,